Okay, so I'm sorry, but we are a bit late with the schedule, so there is no time for questions now. You can ask your questions later during the panel discussion. There will be plenty of time to discuss everything. So I introduce the next speaker, Magister Brigitte Kromp. Um, Brigitte Kromp studied physics and mathematics at the University of Vienna and completed a qualification in librarianship. Since 2008, she is the head of the Austrian Central Library for Physics and the Department of Consortium Management at the Vienna University Library. She is an expert for open access within the framework of the Austrian Academic Consortium and she has been involved in the negotiation of consortium deal with open access components. She represents Austria on the Scope 3 Governing Council and the High Level Group on Big Deals at the European University Association. And today she will talk about transformative publishing agreements within the, con the context of Plan S. Please, I welcome. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for the invitation. It took me around 40 years to come from the last row here to the first row because it's 40 years that I started my studies and I'm happy to give this presentation today. Uh, so we heard a lot about uh, the visions and principles of Plan S and now I want to give you more information about the practical uh, implementation of Plan S and what is the role of libraries. Uh, I try to summarize just as a recap Plan S in one sentence. So, Plan S is an initiative for open access publishing launched by Coalition S, an international consortium of research funders, with the goal to make full and immediate open access available in the very near future, with the requirement that scientific publications that result from research funded by public grants must be published in compliant open access journals or platforms. The starting date is the 1st of January 2020. So, uh, more or less, we heard there are nine ways to be compliant with open access. I try to summarize it. So, more or less, there are three options to be Plan S compliant. First, to publish in full open access journals. Second, to deposit scholarly articles in open access repositories without embargo. And third, publishing in hybrid journals under a transformative open access agreement. So, uh, as a big part of, uh, as many researchers, really tend to publish their publications in journals that they know. Uh, the expectation is that a big part of Plan S compliant articles will be articles in subscription journals that are covered by transformative agreements because these are the journals publishers know. So what are these trans transformative agreements? Uh, let me start, I, I give a definition of hybrid journals, we heard it already. So hybrid journals are subscription journals, this means closed access journals, with an open access option for individual articles. It means that also can decide if they want to make their article open access or not. In many cases, authors have to pay article processing charges if they want to take the open access option. And today, most subscription journals offer an open access option. That means the result is uh, that we have a lot of journals with mixed content, both closed access uh, articles and open access articles in one journal. So what is now... Uh, the vision and the idea of transformative agreements in the context of Plan S. Uh, transformative agreements are open access deals between institutions and or funders and publishers with the goal to flip journals from hybrid journals into full open access journals. A very important requirement of Plan S is uh, to move from a subscription-based payment to a pay-as-you-publish based payment. So a very important question for libraries, and my talk will be a lot about money, uh, but the important question for libraries and universities was, what would this, uh, what would this mean money-wise? Uh, one of the major questions, what would this mean money-wise on a global level, was answered already 2015 
by Ralf Schimmer of the Max Planck Digital Library. And to make it short, you can read this uh, calculation. But if we invest all the money, we invest in one year on a global level in one year subscription. And if we divide this amount through the number of uh, articles published in a year, there would, the result would be that we could invest 3,800 euros to pay for open access publishing per article. So to make it short, there is enough money in the subscription system. But although there is enough money in the subscription system on a global level, there are obstacles on a national and institutional level. And one of these obstacles is the so-called double dipping. So double dipping is very easy to understand. Double dipping is that we pay twice. Once subscription fees for access to the content and then APCs for publishing open access. So to come from theory to practice, maybe it's interesting figures for you. Uh, you can see here um, the blue uh, boxes are the subscription price, the 2019 subscription prices for Vienna University. And the yellow boxes is one APC. I took this from the Elsevier website, uh, from the current Elsevier website. So I think if we come uh, the, maybe to the most curious uh, example, you can see that if uh, you publish only one article, in the journal Linguistics and Education, you even double the price that the university or the institution has to pay for content, for, for access to the content, and for publishing. So, uh, but this double dipping, this effect of double dipping, is not really uh, connected with Plan S, but it was already existing before. It was. Uh, it was uh, yeah, starting with the first hybrid journal, double dipping was a problem for libraries and universities. Uh, so Austrian libraries started already more than five years ago uh, to negotiate so-called uh, open access deals. That means that we try to uh, negotiate the deals that combine <coughs> subscription fees and APCs. And so we have one further requirement to transformative agreements. It must be, these open access deals must be, and I say more or less, cost neutral, at least on a national level. Uh, why did we do this? First was to avoid double dipping. And second, but and I think this was even the more important reason for us, was to support our researchers and to give them the possibility to publish uh, more open access and also to fulfill the requirements of some of the funding agencies. For example, the open access publishing mandate of FWF. Uh, and I want to mention it because I think it's really one of the interesting uh, points that the first transformative agreement was concluded in Austria um, with the Institute of Physics Publishing. So, who are the key players in Austria for negotiation of this uh, kind of deals? First to mention is the Cooperation EMED in Österreich. It is the Austrian Academic Library uh, Consortium, which uh, is an association of uh, around 60 higher education institutions with the goal to have and to bundle uh, power and market power, especially in negotiations with big publishers. The second, the FWF, who was really a forerunner uh, in the open access movement and installed already in 2007 an open access mandate, but was also willing uh, to spend and invest money in open access publishing. And since 2017, we have uh, support with data analysis and also financial support by, uh, and please forgive me to speak in German, Hochschulraumstrukturmittel uh, project. Uh, it's called, I don't find uh, a translation, uh, it's called Austrian transition, uh, transition to Open Access. And all uh, Austrian universities are involved in this project under the lead of Vienna University. So 
uh, up to now, we have uh, open access agreements with uh, all big publishing houses, with the exception of Elsevier. We also try to get uh, this kind of agreements with uh, learned societies. Uh, we conclude uh, agreements with uh, full open access or gold open access publishers, and we support uh, open access platforms like SidePost. To, to show you the impact of a real successful open access deal, uh, this is the case study of our Springer Compact uh, agreement. It started in 2016, and uh, you can see that the ratio of closed and open uh, access articles already in one year switched uh, totally. And what is really very uh, enjoyable is that because uh, it was a demand of the Austrian Rectors Conference that Austrian researchers must have uh, the possibility uh, to decide if they want to publish open access or not. So we have no open access mandate in our contracts, but researchers are free to decide if they want to publish open access or not. Uh, so you see that we have an opt-out rate of 19% at the beginning, but that is it decreasing and starting with 2019, uh, maybe due to the discussion about Plan S, the opt-out rate is by 5% now. Uh, so maybe also an interesting uh, charge, we tried to calculate how many of the publications of uh, Vienna University uh, could already be Plan S compliant published. And if you have a look, it's already more than 50% now with all these agreements we have in place. We are negotiating this year with the American Chemical Society and the Cambridge University Press. And to, to talk a little, to give you a secret, we started on Friday with Elsevier, uh, and I would say maybe not negotiations, but trust building uh, talks. <laughs> So, which articles are affected uh, under Plan S? So, first, only papers resulting from research projects uh, funded by FWF or other Plan S signatories uh, fall under the rules of Plan S. And second, uh, if you have a running uh, grant, this will not be, uh, the, the, the rules of Plan S will not be applied but starting with January 2020, the new grants uh, will, uh, will be under the rules of Plan S. Uh, yeah, and this is another chart uh, which we tried all based, uh, to find out based on 2060 publication uh, that uh, we took from Web of Science and Scopus that it is around 26% of articles mentioned uh, that they were open access funded and uh, one, uh, one further percent were funded by other Plan S signatory funders. So now I'm at the end, the, the last slide is always the best slide. So how can we help you? I am very happy, uh, I would say, I proudly present the Open Access Office uh, of Vienna University. It is physically located uh, within the premises of the Central Library for Physics. It's in this building up in the fifth floor. So we can help you to fund publishing in fully open access journals. We can help you with information about these transformative agreements uh, to deal with the workflows and the requirements. Uh, the Open Access Office is in charge of the institutional repository and, uh, oh, sorry, Guido and Bernhard uh, will be happy to answer all your questions, what you ever want to know about Open Access. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for this talk. We also have to, to move forward three seconds. Already? It, it, no, uh, I, 
I will, I will uh, leave you the slides. The only slide I want to change is this slide with the journals. I will write down journal A to journal D because uh, we have this disclosure agreement with Elsevier, so I'm not allowed to. But you can write it down here and then you see A to D. 